Welcome to Math 122. Uh, this should be our CRM number, I believe. Uh, let's see. So here's my name, uh, my voicemail, office, and email. Out of those options, uh, the easiest way to reach me is going to be by email. I generally will respond to those with one to two business days. Uh, you should have access to me. I should have some office hours before our classes on Tuesday, Thursday. So feel free to come in um, anytime, I would say, between 10.30 on, I should be available. I'm also in the Learning Center at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., so if you are wanting to get up bright and early and share a cup of coffee with me, there's a good time to do that in the Learning Center. This is our book, uh, Elementary Statistics Using the TI-8384 Calculator. I actually am going to be using the Inspires, but I like to use this book just to kind of keep consistency with the books across the, uh, the college. But also, if you're using an 8384, then this book will help you. If you're using an Inspire, then I'll be in class and I'll be able to help you use the Inspire. So if you already have an 8384, don't, don't stress about it. But if you don't have a, a graphing calculator yet, I would encourage you uh, not, not to go buy the TI Inspire, but to go rent it from the uh, Learning Center. So what you do is you go to the finance office and you pay, I think it's about $5, and then you can take that receipt with an ID and then Charlene will be able to check out a Inspire for you. So get that ASAP. I will expect you to have a graphing calculator. If, you, if you're using the 8384, you're fine. But in class, I'll be demonstrating with an Inspire. I have had some people bring Casios before and make it work. I'm just not as familiar with those. So you have options there. Okay, so we said you need to have a graphing calculator. I'm also going to expect you to have a MyMathLab account. And, and that means by today. You have the paper that gives you instructions on how to register. I will expect you to register today. If I see people that are not registering, I'm going to assume you're not interested in this class. And you can be expected to be dropped by, really, by Tuesday. So get that done today. We'll go through that as we go further on, but I'm just going to tell you right now that if, if for some reason you are waiting for financial aid and you're worried about that or uh, you don't have access to the money right now, uh, you basically you can go on here. And when you go to register, it's going to give you a little option to input the code. And then in small text, it gives you a temporary, I think it's a two-week trial. So uh, that gives you an option. And especially if you're on the waiting list, that gives you an option to kind of get in there, start working on the homework. Based on the waiting list I'm looking at right now, I'm expecting to take most of you, especially if I find a couple of people that aren't keeping up. We should have space. So uh, make sure you get on that and that you get working on the assignments as soon as possible. Here's our grading. Looks like 50% would be our tests and quizzes. We'll cover chapters 1 through 12. There will be online quizzes as well as paper quizzes that will be done in class. Uh, there are five tests, and this test you can expect to get a score of zero. Arrange with me. If you're going to have a, a situation that you know about, arrange, you can take the test early. If uh, something happens last minute and you contact me, I'll try to accommodate and work with you. I can't guarantee it. And um, worst case scenario, I do allow you to drop your lowest test score. So if something does happen where uh, life happens and you're not able to be there for that day, I understand. Life happens. Obviously, I'm not here right now. Life happens, right? But the idea is that I will allow that once during the semester. So if you need to, I can drop that lowest test score. Those of you that don't have that life happen, then you get that boon of me dropping your lowest test score, uh, which helps your grade at the very end of the semester. We will also have group activities. These are basically like uh, culminating activities that draw together sometimes topics that I know that are really difficult for people. Then we'll have an activity that kind of reinforces that. It also shows you how we use statistics with real data. Looks like I misspelled the word activities. That's exciting. Um, but it'll also sometimes draw from previous chapters and future chapters. And so it's a good chance for me to show you how really statistics, statistics is connected, and it's not a, a one topic at a time subject. It really is overall connected, and these things build on prior topics. There will be a final test. Uh, notice on the chapter test that I do allow a note card at both sides. This means that this first chapter is going to have a lot of definitions. You could write those down. You can probably count on that when you go to take the test that I'm not going to be asking you to define a word. What I'll probably be doing is asking you to apply that word. So it seems like I'm being nice by allowing this note card at both sides, but really I'm going to uh, want you to keep in mind that that means I can ask harder questions. So don't think I'm going to be this you know, really nice person and making the class super easy. 
I'm going to ask harder questions, so come prepared. You need to come with a note card for the test because the questions I'm going to be asking are hard enough that you're going to want to have that material. Final test, I'm a little more generous. I allow one page of notes just because it's a larger breadth of topics. For each test, I give you a, uh, I call it a review sheet, but basically it's a list of topics that are on the test. So you look through the, the quizzes, you look through the notes, you look through the activities, you should be able to prepare yourself for the test. For the final, I give you the same thing. It's a much bigger list of topics and then you need to go through your previous chapters, so I give you a little more space to do that. All homework is done on my math lab, so we already discussed that. Don't plan on late homework. There's already a little death clock on your homework that lets you know when it's due, but basically count on 11.59 the day before the test. That gives a little bit more of wiggle room so that if life happens, you can catch up on homework, and it also gives me the opportunity to assign some harder questions that I expect might take you a little longer. You might need to come get help on. So if you come to a homework question that's kind of difficult, don't give up. You have time to process that. That does not mean that you always put off your homework till the day before the test. That will not work. You will not be successful in this class with that. In fact, if I see people starting to do that, if I see, you know, the group of people that are, are not keeping up with the homework, I can change this time. It's very easy to do. Um, I've had to do that probably three semesters ago. I had a class that just, they were, they said, no, I just, just put it off till the weekend before. And I heard them saying that to each other. And I saw the students not doing well. And so I just started saying, okay, I taught it today. You have three days to do it. And I could change the dates to do that. That creates more work for me. And it's really not ideal. I want you to have time to process the topics of statistics. I want you to have wiggle room in case life happens. But if I see people that are being irresponsible, I can change this quickly. Here's our grade scale, pretty straightforward grading. Please keep in mind that final grades are not rounded, so 89.99% is still a B. You need to make sure that if you want that A, that give yourself some wiggle room. Get that up to a, a 92, 93%. You don't want to be playing that, that fence of grades. Attendance is very important. I'll expect you to be here. Um, I'm not necessarily going to be calling out roll every day, but what I'll do is I'll pass around a paper where you can sign in for the day. If I see that you're missing classes, uh, I can easily drop you. If you have three or more absences, you may or may not be dropped. So, but if I see you're not keeping up with the work and not attending, I uh, probably will be dropping you. Here are some important dates just for your convenience. Let's keep going. Obviously, we talked about uh, technology that cell phones are not calculators. You're going to be expected to have a graphing calculator. I have seen some people take the the Inspire and some things they like the 8384 with and some things they like the Inspire. So I've seen some people that have an 8384 still go check out an Inspire and they come to class with two calculators, right? Those are my, my math geeks and they, you know, put it in their pocket protectors and all that. But no, it's really cool. I mean, do what helps you. They're like, you know, it's easier for me to do this and the calculator I know. and But I find that there's a lot more stuff in the Inspire that you can do. It's really kind of point and click, so it's a lot easier. It's kind of more Windows based. And I find students that have the Inspire, since that's what I'm teaching with, tend to be happier students. So get the Inspire for your happiness. All right. Uh, extra help. We talked about that if you need access to me, I do have office hours before this class, so feel free to come in and talk to me also in the Learning Center, but you can also go to the go to the Learning Center and get that help. Go to the tutors. Um, if you go to try to get help from me and, and I'm not as accessible, sometimes I'm running copies, go to the Learning Center. They have tutors there, but um, feel free to make use of me, but that, that would be my best bet is, is I've already kind of taught it to you and I've already walked you through a lot of this. You can always come talk to me, but sometimes it's a lot nicer coming from somebody closer maybe to your age bracket or, you know, a little more like a peer. So it, I'm happy to help you, but just keep that in mind. Um, if you do have any disabilities I need to know about, please notify the uh, DRC Center and contact them. Get me that information. I, I always want to encourage people to do that because for me, a student with a disability just says, you know what, I struggle with learning this way and I learn better another way. I wish every student came with that. It's like a cheat sheet. So get that help. Let me know what I can do to accommodate and help you be a better student. Uh, get that to me as soon as possible. And same with veterans. If you have any special needs with that, please go to them, talk to them, talk to me so that I can accommodate your needs. These are our official student learning objectives. 
I will be covering all these topics as you look through the assignment list. You'll notice these topics are listed there. Uh, this is the bare minimum of what I have to cover. We're, we're going to have a good breadth of uh, statistics knowledge by the end of this course. There's prerequisites, and I think I'm not interested in talking more about this. So here is the second paper I want you to look at, and that's going to be our assignment list. Okay, uh, This is tentative. I put that every time because this is what I'm planning on you doing today is uh, getting the course introduction, covering these two sections, and going home, signing in on the course, and starting that homework. Okay, So uh, that's today. When you come in Thursday, come prepared to do notes on 1.4 and 1.5. Then you work on that homework that night. Uh, notice our first test is, looks like September 12th, so there, there should be a little death clock on the, the homework that tells you September 11th at 11.59, all the Chapter 1 and 2 homework uh, closes. That does not mean you put that off again. I'm going to emphasize this again, because notice, you know, a lot of these sections build on the prior section. So if you have not actually gone through 1, 2, 1, 3, that makes 1, 4 and 1, 5 really difficult for me to teach it to you. You're really putting yourself at a disadvantage. Also, coming into the end of the second week, I gave you a quiz. So that means you really should have processed most of this information to be able to handle a quiz on those topics. This review, the activity, I give you the wiggle room in case life happens, or in case there's some topics that are harder, some homework problems that are harder. Do not put off the homework. Get ahead of it, and that gives you plenty of time to process the knowledge, prepare your notes, to, to take the tests. Okay, so anything else important on here? I don't think so. Uh, I don't have our final day yet, so I kind of left that open, uh, but the rest of it should be accurate. Okay, next, let's see, where did it go, right there. I wanted to start with this first. You need to make sure that you go to this website and register this today. If you have an account with Pearson already, just sign in with that account. You go to add a class, you're going to use this code. That's really easy, okay? If you've not done it before, follow these instructions to register. Once you are registered, they'll ask you for what course you're registering, put in this code, and you should be able to, once again, just get into the course from there. Do that today. So make sure you get on that. If you have any questions with that, uh, feel free to ask, uh, contact me. Uh, you could talk to Mr. Onizuka. He's here to help you. Uh, but get on that ASAP. All right. Uh, let's see, where are we next? Invite. This is a resource I use uh, to send messages to you. In fact, if you uh, got my messages earlier and you already registered for this, you should have got a message from me this morning. So thank you for being my overachievers, and you're welcome. You got your first message, okay? Uh, a couple ways of doing this is pretty easy. If you have a smartphone, there's the website to kind of register that. Um, if you don't have a smartphone, this is the way we used to do it. You text to this number, and it's at math122tr. It'll ask you for your name. You type it in. This is just an easy way for me to send messages to you. You can send messages to me without um, me trying to collect phone numbers and getting all creepy. That, that's not good. So this is a way of kind of us talking back and forth without exchanging numbers and having it be awkward. Okay. So please make sure that you do this. This is not an optional service. I'm going to be sending messages out. And you are liable for receiving those messages. So you are responsible for doing this. If you don't have a cell phone, you can actually go to this website and just use your email. You have an email address through the school, if worst case scenario. So uh, the idea is sign in there. This obviously isn't the promptest way to receive the, mess the notifications, but it's better than nothing. So I'm expecting that you're receiving those messages. It could be something like if I have to cancel class or if I covered the notes and something came up that I didn't cover that shows up on the homework, I can address all those things through the service. It's a way for me to contact you. It's a convenient way for us to communicate. Please make sure that you get this done ASAP. Okay. And last but not least, let's see. So when you go to log in, the site that I normally go to is just in coursecompass.com and it redirects, but you can do the course in my lab, mastering all that. Um, if you've been here before, feel free to just sign in. If you have not or you're not sure, then register. Okay. But make sure you get on here. Once you sign in or once you register, at some point it's going to give you an option to add the class and you're going to use that code that was on the sheet that you should have already received. Uh, but once you have registered and you sign in, I'm going to get time now. Okay. It's going to give you a list of any courses that you have right now currently through Pearson. 
So we are on Math P22, Tuesday, Thursday. We'll click on there. And this should be pretty much what your site looks like as well. Uh, notice right around here as soon as it loads. Apparently my internet is not wanting to work. There we go. Uh, we've got a death clock. It says that the next test is going to be uh, probably in about 15 days. I'm recording this a little earlier. But in 14 days, 10 hours, the homework shuts down. And that will be the 11.59 the day before the test. Okay. Uh, in here, you can go to the, your current assignments. You go to homework. So this will be kind of all the current homework. Uh, looks like I have some things I need to fix in here. And that's okay. Um, quizzes. There are in-class quizzes and online quizzes. Uh, those are already open right now. You have access to those. The idea is I'm expecting you to go through these quizzes. Um, you could go through them at the end of each chapter, or you can kind of save them as a review for the final. But I will ex be expecting you to go through these quizzes uh, for the course. That's the online quizzes and the paper quizzes. The gradebook button here, if you click there, that should be your grade. As you do assignments, as I update tests, that will be your current grade. Everything I update will go in there. So those are your kind of go-to buttons. Uh, when I go to homework, I'm going to go ahead and go to one that I'm familiar with here. Let's go ahead and say 2.3. And this has a question, I believe, on... Let's see if I can find it. Here we go, class width. This is not something I really emphasize on the test, but it is something that you should kind of be introduced to. So when you do class width, if you have no idea, you know, it's kind of the width between these the classes when we categorize data, and you may go, okay, I don't know, I think it's nine. No, well, no, that's not right. What's nice is it gives you a little definition of what a class width is and kind of how it works. So that's a nice little help right there. Those are things that if you didn't know, you would want to write that down. If you're still not getting it, you can go up here and click question help. The options in here that I would emphasize is, first of all, textbook. Textbook will just pop open in any edition of the book. It'll probably take too long where I'm not going to mess with it right now. But it not only opens up any edition of the book, but it opens it up to the page where they explain this topic with examples. So that would be something I would encourage you to use is the e-edition of the book. And I'm not going to wait for it right now. So let's keep going. Uh, the next option I would use would be this view an example. What being an example does is it brings up a similar question to this one, okay? And as you go through, it kind of does step-by-step -step explanations on how to handle the question, what things mean, how to calculate it. This is a pretty good choice. Uh, for a last resort, you could do help me solve this. And what they do is they take uh, this question and they literally walk you through step-by-step -step on what numbers to fill in and how to handle it. And uh, at the end, they've kind of explained that exact question to you. I would use that as a last resort, but, but that's a choice, okay? Uh, you can use Ask My Instructor, but I'm not sitting at my computer waiting for your questions, so it'll probably take me one to two business days to get back to you, okay? Um, that is an option, but it, it's almost easier just to kind of get up, go to the Learning Center, and get some help. So there's some quick and immediate help you can get. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, you can use Ask My Instructor. It's just not the easiest way to get a quick result. I'm going to warn you right now that these are great tools, but I have seen people do very well on the homework and fail the tests. And most of the time what that means is when I walk by and they're doing the homework, they're clicking on these buttons, these two especially, every single question. And so what they're doing is they're preparing themselves so that they cannot do a statistics question with a example and a help me step-by-step -step instruction. You will not be successful in this class if you are having to do this on every single question. Okay? It is a help, it is a resource, but if you are using it on every question, it will not help you in the long run. So please keep that in mind. So I think that is everything I needed to cover for this. Um, I will go over real quick with you guys. Let's see. When you log in, and, and some of you don't have access to this yet, but I'm going to encourage you to uh, go when, you, when you're registered in the course. And I'll be dropping people and adding the wait list, so you'll know uh, by Thursday whether you're going to be in this class or not. Um, as far as adding people, I will still be dropping people after that, so make sure you're keeping up on the work. But uh, when you go to log in, and yours might look me a little different than mine, but give me a second. 
where it goes, my courses. In time there. Okay. Yours will look kind of similar to this. I think this one is ours. Okay. Um, but this is going to be, oh, I don't remember what it's called. They're probably going to have it up here. I don't remember what this is called. Um, KCC Dean Structure. I don't know. That's not what we're calling it. But this is going to be something we're going to be using. Um, I will be having you checking some of your quiz answers online. This is a quicker way for you to get kind of results on your quizzes. Um, there are also um, tests, parts that we'll be doing online. The entire test won't be online, but portions will be online. So I'll be expecting you to um, come in here to do that. And uh, mostly doing that, checking quizzes and doing tests. This is not going to be your current grade. This is just a great resource for me to help you checking your quizzes taking tests, and um, last, this is kind of my favorite thing, is in files. I have dropped a bunch of files in here for you. If you're absent or you're not going to be there, you can download the activities that we're going to do. Uh, you can download the quizzes. Um, I think notes would be kind of another big thing. So these are going to be the notes, and I'll be making copies of these to help kind of expedite the lectures. Um, but these are, if you're absent and you want to know what you missed, here are the topics, okay? There are our test review talks. So these are things I'm going to be printing out and giving you, but there are also things that you can have access to. Okay, Class materials, I normally drop my syllabus and all that in here, but um, I should have emailed all that to you guys anyway, so it shouldn't be an issue. Anyway, so that should be it. Uh, the only thing you have left to do is, is listen to the lecture. You should have a copy from uh, Mr. Onizuka of the 1.1, 2, and 3 lecture notes. Let's go through those, and, uh, and then you're done for the day, and I will see you on Thursday. Once again, I appreciate your flexibility.